is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. And, and I've got some more painting to do. I've been using up so much of my painted fabric on some quilts that I've been making. And so I need more. And, and every time I rewatch my videos, I want to make even more and more and more of them. So this time we're going to talk about layering. We're going to do a couple of different techniques with layering. First, on the plate second using stencils and third using stamps so here we go the stamps that i'm going to use are the joggles stamps those are the about a little bit more than a half inch thick um, foam that is wonderful because then you don't have to have it mounted on anything and there it goes you can see that athena started speeding it up already so I'm going to start with this first stamp, and I am stamping onto the second plate. I should have put some more paint on that because when this all gets done, you really can't see it that well. Um, but, you know, live and learn. Everybody does things that they go, boy, I'll do that better next time. So I'm going to just use the leftover paint to make another one of the solid prints that I generally am printing something else on later. Now this color worked out much better, and this is one of my absolute favorite Elizabeth St. Hillier stamps. It's called Chain Link. So if you go to joggles.com, or definitely use the link below, because when you use the link below, I get a small commission, and that means that I can do this more. So thank you very much. So I'm going to just leave those on there, and you'll see that I'm not rushing with the plate on the left. Instead, I am swiping it, trying to get it to dry. The idea with layering on the plate is something that people that do gel press um, on paper do all the time. That's probably the most preferred technique. For the fabric, eh, not so much, mainly because I'm so impatient, I think, but I think I get a lot of the same effects with the other things that I do. So here, I've stamped with the black, and the next thing I have to do is wait for the plate on the left to completely dry, which honest to Pete is easier said than done. So I am going to, at this point, you'll see me kind of swipe, but I'm going to have Athena skip approximately two minutes of video so that that can dry and you're not going to watch the paint dry. All right, so the paint is just about dry and I just did a little bit of dabbing with um, an extra fabric. So it's all dry and this is the next part to put down another color. Now, usually I use cream or white, but the hard part is that when you put it down, you want to brayer it out as little as possible because that white paint is going to activate the paints from the those three that I put down with the stamps. And when it activates, I want it to come up with the um, white paint. Whereas if you just brayer it and brayer it, it'll all just start being smeared again. So you got to brayer it just a little bit. And now we watch it dry again. So I'm going to skip forward another couple minutes. So I think it might be done. Oh no, I'm going to put it down. I do a little test to make sure. So I'll bet you the first time it dried for at least three minutes completely. And then this time was another three minutes. So you have to be really patient when you choose to do this technique. So I think it's just about time. And when I peel it off, um, I don't peel it off like a scab. I take my time peeling the fabric around. And the effect is really cool. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, can't I just get that by stamping them on the fabric? Yes, but it's different. So when you try it, try it and see how you like it. Now we're going to do some layering with stencils. And the idea here is that we're going to layer like that geometric design with the circles or the thick flowers with the thin stencil design. So watch how we do this. So I've already got a piece that has... Um, you know, a solid print on it. So now I'm going to do the second layer on the print, on the fabric. So first I'm putting down the green, putting down that gridded stencil and trying to get my fingers. You see how I'm working my fingers in there to get all of the little bits on the green. And then that printed on there. That was nice. Then lift it off and now put down the new piece. All right. So that's going to be a fairly 
um, green piece. And I did notice when I laid the stencil down on the other side and that green came off, I'm thinking, I'm going to do that next time I do some stenciling. So now I'm putting down the circle piece. And that's the piece on that I just put down on the top was the one that I first picked up the little squares with. So I've got the light green, the medium green, and then now that blue. And that is so cool. At least I think it's so cool. So the idea of layering stencils that have two different or contrasting designs. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do that thick flower and that's going to put down the thick design. So I'm using a brown. Those are my Dilutions paints that I'm always using um, that are the acrylic paint that you don't have to add anything to. Oh, with this one, I am using a regular muslin. So you see how it's a little creamy? I did that the other day when I was at a store because I didn't have my white stuff. And I really liked it. It made it a very kind of a warmer color instead of the crisp colors. So if you like warmer colors, consider doing um, the same steps that I'm doing, but using a muslin instead of the bleached muslin. So this is what I'm going to add to it. So first you got the thick piece. Now I'm going to add another color. And you want to do something that's going to be contrast or darker. So by using that green, I'll be able to see it on top of that light tan. And that one that I'm, the stencil I'm using now, that's one of the peacock designs from Elizabeth St. Helier at joggles.com. There's a whole series that are just peacocks. I did a video on that not that long ago. So when I pick this up, do you see the layers? Do you see the green on top of the brown? Those pictures, we will have stills of those at the very end, so you'll be able to see it a little bit more. And I promise, not the next time, but the next time after that that I do videos, just because the next time's already been recorded, I will try to hold the fabric up longer. So now I'm going to do layering with stamps. Now the truth is, this is probably the one I do the most. I have a print that I think, well, it's okay, but it's not wowing me, and I add to it with the stamps. As a matter of fact, you've heard me say sometimes that I really should have stopped. Why did I keep going with that? I should have not done that last one with the stamp. Learning when to stop is, I think, the hardest part about gel printing, and I think that most artists that do gel printing would agree with me. I hear it all the time on the Facebook page that I'm a part of. Here, the green that I use, yeah, it really didn't show up much. I should have put more paint on. Um, I don't know why I didn't, but because I do with the gold. So now I'm going to use the gold, and I'm going to put more paint on. Like, duh, that's a something you can do, Nancy. So I'm going to add the yellow around it. So I love the I don't want to use a big word here, but I love the juxtaposition of the little squares and then those little swirl slashies. I, I think it looks great. I do wish that I had a little bit of color in the background of that green first because there's an awful lot white showing for me. Some people like that look and that's why people get to paint their own fabric so that they can make what they like. This stamp is quickly becoming one of my favorites. It is one that has writing on it. I have no idea if those are real words, um, but it's kind of like old-fashioned, uh, like my great-grandma used to write with um, cursive writing, which nobody does anymore. And I've tried to see whether or not it says something, but I can't see it. But it looks really cool, and I almost always use a black when I'm doing that. So that one turned out pretty good, but the next one I think turned out even better. Is it this one? No, I put it up. There it is, with this pink. So you can see that same um, Elizabeth St. Hillier peacock stencil there. And then with the black on it, it's just yummy. Oh, isn't that yummy? And having just the words line up there. Now this is a four inch, no, it must be a six inch. It's a six inch stamp. So I wish that there was such a thing as an eight inch stamp. I'll have to talk to Barb at Joggles and ask her to make a bigger one because I love that one so much. So just adding stamps to it. Now why I just did this solid black and went and picked up the whole solid black, I don't know because I didn't think I needed a black painted piece and honest to Pete, you know there's nothing you can print on top of a black piece and get anything. So there it sets. All right, so now I'm gonna do two stamps on this one. So I've already done a pink layer, and then I did a stenciled layer with the darker purple. Now I'm coming in with what is my favorite stamp. 
That is the Blossom stamp. I own two of them. I love it so much. It just, it when, I, when I'm in a pickle and I use the Blossom stamp, whatever I've done turns out right. So now here, it's not really visible on the pink and the purple, but it does give it a kind of flower garden look. Like it's added the green of the leaves for the flowers and next stamp is the flowers. So this stamp is a little fuller one. So the blossom was, you know, very, just with the little spokes. This is gonna be a very full stamp and I'm gonna do two colors. I'm gonna do some purple and some blue. And you know, I was saying that earlier, I didn't use enough paint. This time I maybe used too much. Yeah, I'll get it right someday, I promise. So just going along with the stamp. So I've got two different colors. I love the green in the background. I love the layering of the stencil in the background. That looks like my garden. And now I'm going to brayer it out and there's too much paint and I should have done something else, but instead I just picked it up and come, yeah, it's, it's kind of thick. You've watched my videos enough to know that that doesn't bother me but it does happen. You've also watched some videos long enough where I say, next time I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, old dog can't learn new tricks. So here is the end. These are the ones that we have done. Um, we will put the pictures up at the very end so that you can see there they are. I hope that you enjoys these videos. Um, follow the link below to joggles.com. Um, I really appreciate it when you do that, and I know when you do that because I actually get a little commission check, and I really need that. <laughs> um, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I'd love to see some of the ones that you are painting. So if you want to send them to me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com, or you can post them on our sharing Facebook page, which is Quilting with Nancy Show and Share. And that's where just any viewers come on and show what they've been working on. And everybody just loves what loves to see what everybody else is working on. Um, that's the end of this video. Have a great day.